So basically, League of Legends is hitting us with another dev blog focusing on split two rewards and monetization, dev update League of Legends. So let's see what they're cooking. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy, aka Riot Brightman. What's up? And I'm Andre, also known as Medla. Today we're here to share the final dev update of 2023, and we're recording this on November 30th. Pay attention, only one guy is celebrating Christmas. Not a single other computer or monitor has Christmas lights. Plus, there is no Christmas tree. Kinda sad. Now, 2023 has been a memorable year for League. We started this video series to connect with you more often and learn what you care about most. And while we've still got a lot of work to do, we've also had some moments we're celebrating, like battling with a friend in Arena during Soul Fighter, rocking out to Heartsteel and New Jeans, and witnessing the most watched World's Finals ever with T I mean, when it comes down to League of Legends, World Championship Finals, every single year they are beating record after record after record. I mean, it all comes down to the marketing team at Riot. Because at the end, I don't think we are getting the increase in players. I'm pretty sure the numbers have been dropping since Season 3. This game is still alive somehow, God knows how. Maybe because it preys on addiction and we're all addicts. Plus, when it comes down to marketing, we're looking at Arcane, new music. So as, as he said, hard steel, new jeans and so on and so on. So, you know, technically it is what it is. That's why the numbers are skyrocketing. Plus, we have to focus on the idea that Twitch has a kingmaker system. So, which means if you are at the top, you have the most viewers, you will get even more viewers. Because no one is bothering to scroll down on the category. And when worlds are happening, everyone is focusing on the worlds, you know? T1 scoring a decisive victory on their home turf. Now, the next time you hear from us, we'll be kicking off season 2024 and sharing a lot of our plans for the year with you folks. Today, though, we want to give you some interviewer updates on a couple of topics. Uh -huh. First, Split 2 ends January 9th, so you have about a month to earn your honor and ranked rewards. Season 2024, though, starts on January 10th. Okay, so we have one month till season 14, which is amazing, because Lord knows I cannot wait for that new season. Because I'm actually, for the first time in the very long time, excited to play League of Legends in the new season. Plus... Maybe I am high on copium, but maybe, chat, just maybe, they're gonna give us a cinematic. You know? Just maybe. It's like, after last year fiasco, the bar is set very low. It's like, imagine, ground level, it's even lower than that. So, literally any kind of cinematic will do, you know? I'm just saying. Now, speaking of honor rewards, for those that reach the highest honor rank, this year's reward skin is three honors, Akshan. You said the same thing last season. No, I didn't see the same thing last season because in season 12, we actually got a cinematic, which was like, I mean, you know, 2022 set up a pretty high standard. So naturally, we got disappointed. Well, besides the fact that the cinematic was absolute dog shit, 3D render of flying through the minion while fucking chat GTP generated voice lines were talking over it, but you get the idea. Akshan will be swinging onto the rift and distributed to Honor Rank 5 players with patch 14-2, which is in late January. Wait, that's the Honor skin, no? Hold on. The reward skin is three Honors, Akshan. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the new Honor level 5 skin that you're getting, because right now what we have is, I'm pretty sure, Grey Warwick and the Twitch. Medieval Twitch, I'm pretty sure. So we're getting, uh, pretty sure that's going to be the first skin right now. Actually, not bad. Malzahar, we also have Malzahar, really? But okay, okay, I understand the meme behind Lux has Basilian skins, Ari has Basilian skins, but why not a single female received an Honor 5 skin? Don't tell me supports are toxic and not getting Honor 5. Just saying, you know? Akshan will be swinging onto the rift and distributed to Honor Rank 5 players with patch 14-2, which is in late January. You'll have to wait a little bit longer for Split 2's rank rewards. For context, when we first announced a mid-year ranked reset, we didn't originally have a unique skin planned for Split 2. Now, at that point, we didn't have quite enough time to actually get a unique skin made for January, uh -huh. so we made the call that it was much better to do one, have it be a little bit delayed to February, uh, than to miss out on that. Supports are always toxic. No, 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 my Uwu Kitan cannot be toxic. No way. So, you'll be seeing that in February as a result. So, today... We Wait, so we're getting... After Split 2, which is right now... No, we're, shit, we're in Split 3 right now, fuck off. We're actually the sprint free now? Yeah, we should be. Hold on, I, I am confusing. Or am I mistaken? Don't know, but anyway, we're getting rewards in February, which is going to be Victoria's Chindemar, I believe. We were announcing that the Split 2 rank skin is for all you tower divers out there. Hope you love crit. <laughs> Victoria's Trindemir. Oh, being crit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks fucking amazing, not gonna lie. Like, straight up, looks like from a different game. 
Now, take this Victoria Strindemere skin and compare it to, I don't know, Joe Gap's base model, Zillion's base model, you know? It's like, I don't think we're looking at the same game. <laughs> right, more likely. Uh, he'll be spinning onto the rift with... I haven't seen Shindamere on the Rift since season 11. Yeah, you just wait for a new season. Season 14 with experimental hexplate on Shindamere is going to be borderline fucking insane. Patch 14.4. One more thing we want to make sure all of you are aware of is that our minimum system requirements are being updated. Now what this means is League will no longer support Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1. This change will take effect in patch 14.4, which again is coming in February. I do enjoy how every single year they are just nuking Eastern Europe. Last year, they killed a 32-bit client. So Turkish, Poland, Bulgarians were all upset. How do I know? Because I play with them. It's like they straight up killed 90% of the player base who are playing on the potato PCs, you know? Now some of the players upgraded to microwave PCs. Not potato PCs, microwave. Which were running on Windows 7, 8 and 8.1. Now they're killing even that. Good. Honestly, good. Because at the end of the day, that means we're gonna get faster loading times. That's not gonna lie, chat. If you're watching our content, you know we're playing in bronze, we're playing in silver. The queue times can get a bit out of control. We're talking about five minutes plus sometimes. Absolutely disgusting. So if you're on one of these OSs, please consider upgrading in the next month or two. These updates are critical for allowing us to continue to improve the stability and performance of League. While we want to ensure League is as accessible as possible to as many players as possible, at some point continuing to support legacy operating systems that very few players are still using heavily limits our ability to serve the vast majority of the player base. Okay, now let's talk about monetization. When we released Breakout True Damage Echo, we mentioned a broader monetization discussion coming in December. Wait, Breakout True Damage Echo, what? Was that the one skin that got me fucked up in Lolbill? Yeah. Yeah. That's the skin that got me fucked up in Lolbo. I've never seen the skin. Just saying. Unavailable. How do you purchase it? Question mark? Hello? So, here to kick off that conversation are Drew Levin and Pu Liu. Hey everyone. I'm Drew, just a Capybara 11, League's head of business and insights. And I Let's hear that one more time. I'm Drew, just a Capybara 11, League's head of business and insights. League's head of business. Just a Capybara. <laughs> this guy gets it. And I'm League's game director, Pew Lu, aka Riot Pew Pew Lasers. Monetization isn't something we frequently talk about. Pew Pew Lasers, so you want to tell me every single time I'm playing Timo and I'm making a pew sound effect, I'm mentioning uh, that guy. Makes sense. About So we usually focus on talking about what you care about most, gameplay updates. We last wrote in depth about our approach to monetization over seven years ago. And we know this is one of those topics that should be an ongoing conversation. So we're here to pick that up and continue it. We think the criteria we use to make decisions about monetization should be clear to all of you. For the most part, these values haven't changed. They're core to who we are. First and foremost, we care about making a great game. And while we're always working on evolving gameplay, the League experience is about so much more than a competitive game. It's about one of the greatest esports in the world, catchy songs with unforgettable music videos, passionate creators, and a thriving community that loves the world and champions of Runeterra. The player dollars you all trust us with allows us to reinvest in this and continue to grow League and keep chasing legendary dreams. Another core monetization- Yeah, about that. We trust you with our dollars and you know what to do with those dollars. And then you pay those dollars to someone, not pointing any names, who got gapped in the bottom because he was playing Karchus and then he decided as a lead of that department to remove the pings because he thought that was toxic and then you give him an extra paycheck because you know that was that was a good decision you 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 truly contribute to the company and to the game that we all are addicted to you know it's like i don't know brother if i would trust my money to that guy just saying the value we have is that you can be the best league player in the world without spending anything on the game League's monetization centers around optional cosmetics and will continue to do so. Next, as a free-to-play game that doesn't sell any gameplay power, we happily embrace- Gap? Doesn't say gameplay power, chat. I know you can name at least three pay-to-win skins. I'll start. This skin is for the pay-to-win because every single time you're using Distortion as LeBlanc, which is her dub that jump 
she leaves a small mark on the ground where she can come back. See, the thing is, with default skins, that mark is orange. That mark is orange, it's easy to see. With Ravenborn, that shit is dark green. So if she uses her distortion in the jungle, it's literally impossible to see where she's coming back. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of different skins. Bro, what where, skin? One Syndra skin was also disabled in the Pro League. It's even disabled in the Pro League because that shit is paid to win. Uh, if I'm not mistaken... Skins... Is it? I'm pretty sure it's Atlantean Syndra, no? Fanatic out of an EQ animation. Yeah, true that, true that. I don't exactly remember which skin of Syndra. I'm pretty sure it's Atlantean. Where it's kind of difficult to see her bubbles. Not bubbles, balls. You get the idea. Uh, also, we have a couple of ADCs with the same skin issue. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. You cannot have pay-to-win skins in-game and then come out, make up a video and say, well, technically our skin, we have nothing that is pay-to-win in League, you know? But yeah, when it comes down to Vlad, Dark Water, Vlad, yeah, 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 that's, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one. This is the one, because you cannot see his ultimate, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's very difficult to see his ultimate in here. So yeah, good luck. Anyway, what were we, uh, in here? No, in here, yeah, in here. It's the reality that the vast majority of players will never spend a single dollar in League of Legends. For a competitive game that sells cosmetics, we believe that this should be the case. For those of you who choose to spend money on League, thank you. And for everyone who invests in other- Just casually, thank you. And the lucky is, is just, what the fuck are you doing with your money? Uh, I fully understand that guy. Your ways, your time, your passion, your fandom, thank you for keeping the League community thriving. If you do decide to purchase something, whether that thing costs a little or a lot, we want to make sure that you're getting something that you're excited about. Finally, what you get out of League should reflect what's important to you. What that fundamentally means is that different people who focus on different parts of the game should have stuff that's for them. An example is like long-standing systems, such as rank rewards and champion mastery, they're all about what players achieve through their skill and dedication. So what you earn in these systems should feel exclusive. Some things must be earned and cannot be bought. The inverse is also true. There Let's hear that again. Some things must be earned and cannot be bought. Yeah. That was the whole idea of prestige skins. That shit was exclusive as fuck. You can acquire prestige skins only during that event and only because you grinded the shit out of your ass. And you are struggling 24-7, grinding the points, reaching the ultimate point during that event, buying the prestige skin. That was the hype, everyone was happy with that. But then, <laughs> Rita did a bit of a trollage. And they introduced... Redeem Crimson Lee, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's let's not even mention World's 2012 Raven, the original one. Then they decided, yeah, fuck exclusive things, because reignited World's 2012 Raven. Sure. Sure. Uh, Prestige Valiant Sword, hold on, is there going to be another one? There it is. Perfect example. Prestige Valiant Sword Raven 2022. Another perfect example. Skins. Prestige Kid Kaisa. All good. You grinded. You got that skin. All amazing. You have the exclusivity. You are literally top G. You see player with prestige skin. You know he mains that champion. That champion is the player. You know that's how he presents himself in the League of Legends. And then, a few years later, what 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 would it be now? Ah, fuck it. Fuck the exclusivity. Prestige Kaisa 2022. <laughs> anyway. I don't take this exclusivity point very seriously. Just saying. The inverse is also true. There are some things in the game that must be bought and cannot be earned. There are a bunch of systems that have been in the game for a long time, and the logic behind them and their rewards is the exact same as the logic behind our monetization systems. We're making different things for different people, and we believe it's natural that not everyone is going to buy or earn everything. We've got a dev blog out that goes into these values in much more depth. To us, this blog and this video are part of an ongoing conversation. When you've got some time, give it a read. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in the new year. Now back to Medler and Bright Moon to wrap us up. Okay, so that's it from us in 2023. We've both really enjoyed connecting with you through these videos this year, and you can expect to keep hearing from the team regularly in 2024. But there's one more thing before we go, and you know, this year has been a bit of a whirlwind the progress we've made as a team, and most importantly, what we've been able to deliver for you has been so rewarding. And with that, I've decided it's the right time for me to step away from my current role. 
I'll be passing the torch to a new executive producer in the coming months. You'll still see me in season start and possibly in some other things earlier in the year while we search for our next DP to lead the game. It's like, I should be sad when an OG Riot member is leaving, but, hear me out, but I really don't feel sad because I remember the removing all chat fiasco. Yeah, yeah, that, that happened a couple of years ago when they decided to remove all chat. Guess who was spearheading that idea, that project? This guy. It was his idea, he piloted, he led the team. It was his fucking project. He wanted to remove all chat. So, you know, I really don't feel bad for him leaving. It's like, we got Riot Freak off social media. For obvious reasons. This guy who tried to remove all chat also leaving. I don't feel bad. Now, the only target remains is the guy who removed fucking all pings. Because he got pinged six times in the game where he went one and six as Carter's ADC. By the way, in that game, he got pinged by Aatrox who was carrying his fucking ass. And he said, oh no, toxic, toxic, pings are toxic, you know? It's like, we need one more guy to be removed and, 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 and then we're good. Just saying. And unfortunately, little Nas X isn't available. But we're both really optimistic that we'll get an amazing leader and introduce you to them very soon. Working on League for the past eight years has been a dream come true, and it's been an honor to serve you and this incredible dev team. So while this is bittersweet, it's definitely not goodbye. I'll be doing some other stuff at Riot, and I look forward to reconnecting when the time is right. You'll be- You know what would be amazing? If he gets replaced by Riot August. It's like, when it comes down to August, my guy knows how to cook. I wouldn't be upset if August took his place, you know? Just saying. Hearing from both of us more at season start very soon. We're wishing you all a happy, healthy holiday season, and we'll see you on the updated Rift in the new year. Thank you, and bye. And that's the update, okay? So next update is going to be in a month. Gotcha.